All right, guys, I'm gonna be the first to admit that we've really been hitting the blender drinks hard on this channel lately. And that's just because I like to hit the blender drinks hard, if you know what I mean. But it is the summertime and blender drinks are something that I think a lot of people don't like or respect. And I feel like they deserve your respect and your likes. So today we're gonna be making three different blender drinks, perfect for the summertime, things that I find complex. We're gonna be using a little technique that I've also been showing on this channel a lot lately that we learned from Garrett Richard that really will take your blender drinks to the next level. So I don't know, without further ado, let's get into making the content. This strawberry Negroni recipe was created by a New York City bartender, Jeremy Oertel, who is the bartender that made one of my absolute favorite drinks, the Broncolata. This is just a really nice frozen version of a strawberry Negroni. It is perfect for the summertime and it's fantastic. We're just gonna add one little thing to it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually hull a strawberry here. Get the leaf leaps out, but you know, take the thing out, preserve a lot of the strawberry. Because because we're doing blender drinks, we get to just put everything in a blender. So we're just gonna throw that into our blender. Three quarters of an ounce of orange juice, half an ounce simple syrup, one ounce of sweet vermouth, one ounce Campari, one ounce gin, quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum. Now the xanthan gum is going to make the drink a lot more cohesive. A lot of the problem with blender drinks and why a lot of people really don't like them is because they melt so quickly that pretty soon you have a cocktail that is, you know, kind of blendery slushy on top and then you have liquid on the bottom and the liquid is getting kind of warmer and it's just not very good. And so what the xanthan gum does is, I don't think it actually keeps it frozen, but it makes it more cohesive. So you don't get that separation between ice and liquid and it keeps it whole. It also thickens it a little bit and it gives it really nice texture. It's just like this amazing technique that Garrett Richard learned from Starbucks, I believe, right? He was saying that Starbucks blender drinks, this is what they do. And when he found that out, he started doing that to his blender drinks and they've been really awesome. So let's get our ice here. I like to use pebble ice. We're just gonna add about a half a cup of ice in here, maybe a, a touch more. And then we're gonna pour it into a nice, big, double old fashioned glass. You wanna make sure that your glass obviously is frozen to also help keep everything cold. And to garnish, we're just going to take two little half orange wheels, strawberry, bam. Let's grab a straw and taste it. Oh, that's good. It's really no surprise that orange flavors do really well with Campari. Campari having a little bit of orange in its flavor profile anyway, and so obviously that mixes. You get a nice bit of the strawberry here, and then of course it is a fully a Negroni. Really nicely balanced, and then of course, as you can see, I don't know if you can see here if there's too frosted, but the drink is not quickly melting. And so you have a nice cohesive drink, and it's got really nice texture. So there it is, guys, the strawberry Negroni. There is no set recipe for Planter's Punch. Planter's Punch is just an old school style Caribbean punch made back in the day. It's made a lot of different ways. And what's really great about that is that there's so many different ways to express this cocktail. Today, we're gonna be doing the blended version. You guessed it. One ounce of lime juice, three quarters, two to one Demerara syrup, half an ounce allspice jam or pimento liqueur, Couple dashes of Angostura bitters, three ounces of Jamaican rum. And we are not going to put xanthan gum in this so we can show you guys how xanthan gum works and why it works and why it should be in every single blender drink you make from now on. Again, we're gonna use about a half a cup of ice and give it a blend. And we're just gonna pour this into our large Collins glass. Bushy mint sprig, give it the old slappy poop. Stick it in there like that. We'll do a lime wheel as well. Boop. Let's give it a taste. Mm. You get all those nice Jamaican rum notes. The pimento dram is really powerful, so you gotta make sure that you dial that in. Half an ounce, I actually, I mean, it's, it's good. You get the nice pimento dram. Honestly, I could have taken that down to a quarter, been happy with it. Of course, you get that Demerara simple syrup. We did two to one, so it's a little bit sweeter. Also, you get those molasses notes and a lot of those kind of dark sugar notes. And then of course, the lime juice, bringing in the acid, balancing everything out. A little bit more spice from the Angostura bitters. So there it is, guys, frozen planter's punch. There is kind of a long story about this cocktail. So it's the combination of a Dole Whip, which is like a Disney drink. It's basically a pina colada. And then a pina verde, which is a cocktail created by San Diego bartender, Eric Castro. And then that pina verde is sometimes known as a green colada. So we're gonna combine that. So basically what happened was the day that we did the Dole Whip, I, uh, you know, wrapped up shooting. Marius went home. I cleaned up the bar and, and then I went to sleep. And as I was sleeping, I had a dream about Dave Grohl and I was in a car 
with Dave Grohl and we were drinking pina coladas. And so then the next day I was like, that was really weird. And then I thought to myself, like Dave Grohl, the Grohl whip, right? And then I thought if we took a pina verde, right? The green colada and mix that with a Dole whip, we could have the Grohl whip. And if Dave Grohl is watching this video, I hope you do, buddy. I really hope you do. All right, let's do this. One heaping cup of frozen pineapple and a half a banana three ounces of pineapple juice, three quarters of an ounce. Coconut milk syrup is what Marius wants to call it. It is cream of coconut. I call it coconut cream. I call it coconut milk syrup. Everyone says I'm wrong. I'm sure I am wrong. An ounce and a half of white rum, another ounce and a half of green chartreuse. And honestly, guys, I know all of you guys are just gonna be like, green chartreuse, I can't find it, why? You're gonna give me a little bit of grief about it, but this drink will probably work with all of those green chartreuse alternatives. I'm gonna also do a quarter teaspoon of our magic powder. I think it's gonna be hard to blend. I think I might need like, this thing comes with like a little thing. All right, bringing out the big guns. There we go. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna slappy pants and crushy poo our mint, right? To give it like a nice mint bouquet. Then when we're done doing that, we're going to take a little absinthe, spray it onto the leaves. Oh yeah, it like plays up the mint and then it adds more botanicals to it. All right, let's try this out. Tomato, tomato, this is delicious. It's like the pina colada that you never knew that you needed, but you always needed and you needed it. A cross between a Dole Whip and a pina verde, the Grohl Whip, it's amazing. You get that green chartreuse, but it's not overwhelming, adding in all that nice herbaliness to it. And then you, of course you get the pineapple. There's quite a lot of pineapple in here, both liquid and then also frozen form. You get that banana in there, kind of giving it sort of like healthy smoothie vibes, but then you get that little bit of rum. It's nice and alcoholic with three ounces of liquor in here and it is fantastic. So Dave Grohl, you're welcome. This is the cocktail you never knew you needed. There it is, guys, the Grohl Whip. There it is, guys, three blender cocktails. Honestly, this cocktail alone is a mic drop for me. Gotta say it, I don't usually develop cocktails that fast, and this one came to me in a dream. It was almost like it was ordained by the gods of cocktails and rock and roll or something. All right, hope you guys like this video. If you guys wanna do us a solid, you can head on over to theeducatedbarfly.com. Not only do we have all our recipes there, but we've been doing some really fantastic articles. Our good friend, Dylan Ettinger is working with us. He's been writing some really great articles on various spirits and then also distilleries and stuff. So go check that out. Marius was raising his hand for some reason. What were you raising your hand about? What have you forgotten to what mention? What have I forgotten to mention? Oh, um, oh the I guess it's kind of a pro tip though, right? Okay. In this episode, <laughs> we were illustrating why everyone should put xanthan gum into their blender drinks, and this is exactly why. So this is the one that we didn't put xanthan gum in, and as you can see, there's a separation here. It started to melt, so when you put your straw in there, you're gonna be sucking all of this up first. So this one has been sitting much longer, and as you can see, there is, I don't know, this is kind of frosted, but if you can see here, there is absolutely no separation, and so it keeps it completely intact. I don't think that it helps it stay cold. It just changes the texture, right? It like helps the water combine with the cocktail and keeps it that way. I mean, it does stay cold, but I don't think that's why it's, I don't know. I don't know the science behind it. Don't ask me, I don't know. Ask Garrett Richard, cause he probably knows. You know what? I'm gonna ask Garrett Richard. I'll see you guys on another time. Go check out our website and I love you all.